In yesterday's video, we created an N8N workflow, an AI agent that allowed us to post to Facebook groups automatically. In this video, we want to take it a step further and I actually want to show you how you can create an N8N workflow, an AI agent that automatically posts to your school communities. Now, make sure that you use this for good and don't just do this to post in random school communities that you don't manage or control, but this is going to give you superpowers unlike anything else that I've seen on social media or especially on YouTube. So if you wanna learn step-by-step step how you can actually create this automation for yourself so that you can post in your community without having to be obsessively in your community, then make sure you watch this entire video. School, as you know, is a great opportunity to build a community, grow a connection, and potentially even make money. But there are a number of problems and drawbacks to using school. One of the biggest ones is it doesn't have an API where you can be present without having to manually log in. Another problem is that it requires a lot of engagement. It allows, it forces you to have to be inside of the community for an extended period of time. And if you are an internet marketer, if you're trying to make money online, there's so many platforms that require your time and energy and school is just another one on that list. And so if you can build out an automation that allows you to be what's called omnipresent, where you don't have to actually spend a bunch of time inside the community and still build the community and build trust and use your voice while doing it, it is a no brainer opportunity. So if we take a look at the screen here, this is a simple automation that we have set up. It is simply going to check Airtable to see if there is a record that does not have a school post. It is going to use an AI agent to actually uh, using our voice and, and our, our summary to create an engaging post, both a title as well as a headline. It actually requires special code and that was one of the problems that I ran into yesterday. It requires special code for this to work, which I'll show you. And then it uses an HTTP request to actually work with a third party system to allow us to post in the school, which we're gonna show you the entire thing. And when it's all said and done, we will come out with a post that looks just like this. Do you remember this song? And the great thing about this is that this is actually based on a TikTok video that I uploaded um, yesterday sometime. And you don't have to use TikTok in order to seed your content, but it's a great way for me to be omnipresent without having to spend a bunch of time creating additional automation. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set this up step by step, and I'm going to show you exactly what you should do, what you need to do so that you can do this on your own. So I just want to show you kind of the back end background stuff that we've got going on. Whenever I upload a brand new TikTok video, one of the automations that I have set up is that it gets stored into a Google Drive folder. This in a in workflow, which I've created a separate video on, actually checks Google Drive pretty frequently to see if there's a new video. If there is a new video, it downloads the video and it puts it into AWS S3. And the reason why I use AWS S3 is because it can actually, it can transcribe longer videos. There is a node out there, an open AI node that will transcribe some audio, but the file size is actually really so really small. I think it's like 25 megabytes, um, maybe 25 gigabytes. I'm not sure, but it, it's not small. It's not large, I should say. However, when you use AWS and the tri transcribe feature, it allows you to transcribe literally hours worth of a video. One of the drawbacks to the open AI one is that you might have to find yourself converting video to audio and that that introduces a more complexity and so i rather just save the time create a transcription right here wait for it to be done and then we actually will take that transcription we'll put it into ai chat and it'll summarize our thoughts and then it actually saves both the transcription as well as the summary into an air table just like this and so beforehand i created an air table that gives us the file name that's actually based on the Google file name, the title that's grabbed from the, the caption, the S3 upload, which we can delete later on, the transcription ID, the transcript of the original video. Um, this, is a, this is a long text and then the summary as well. And then we also have when it was created and then modified. And then I've got all of these single select boxes that lets me know if it has created that thing. So you can see I have one for Twitter, LinkedIn, Reddit, blog, which I haven't set up yet, Instagram image post. It, did it create an email for me? 
uh, Facebook text post, Facebook group post, as you can see here, and then the school community. Facebook is what we did yesterday. We're going to work on the school today. So if I just hit this right here, hopefully we'll be able to, I'm just going to click on test workflow so you can see what this looks like. And then what we're going to do is once it gets over here to HTTP request, we're going to use a special website here, which we'll get into more in depth to actually do kind of the heavy lifting. It will log in for me to school. It will navigate to the actual school community that I manage, that, that I own and pay for essentially. It will make the post and then, and then it'll actually close out. So we'll be able to verify this in just a moment. You can see it's actually logging into the school community for me. And it's gonna make the post. I, we can go over to my school community to verify that this actually happened. And we can walk away knowing that we have found another way to engage with our community. Now, one of the reasons why you might want to use something like this is simply that your school communities can be ranked based on engagement. And if you're creating a bunch of posts and people are coming back to your, your school community and engaging with the posts, whether they're liking or arguing, whatever it is, it actually will help boost your school community in the, uh, when it compares to the other communities and potentially help you rank. So um, as you can see, we, it's actually in the process of logging in and it's going to copy and paste the title. Let me just show you what that looks like. The title is uh, how to build your online presence. And then the text is establishing your online presence. doesn't need to be complicated. If we come back over here, we should see that in just a moment. Now what's really interesting and one of the issues that I had trying to build, as you can see this, is that you have to select a category and that's one of the additional steps that it'll actually take for you as well. So while that's working, let's jump over to uh, N8N. We can actually start building our own workflow here so that we can do something like this. Now, what's really important is this little piece of code right here. This code is going to help clear up some things, make it a little bit easier and make sure that there aren't any issues when we're posting. So let's go ahead and start working on that. So the first thing we're gonna do obviously is we're gonna go over to N8N and this is gonna work if you're doing it locally, if you're hosting it in the cloud, um, this is gonna work regardlessly. The first thing we're going to wanna do is click on create workflow and then we are going to schedule a trigger. For me, I realized that doing this every hour was kind of intense and so we're just gonna change this to every five hours. Uh, do whatever you feel is best for you and your community but we're going to schedule that. The next thing that we want to do is we actually want to check Airtable. The reason why we want to check Airtable is we want to make sure that there are records out there that we can use for our, for our content. The way that I have my Airtable set up is that we are searching for a record. So we're going to click on search record, just like this. We are going to select our Airtable. For me, it is master file like that and then i am selecting all uploads the next thing that we want to do and this is really important is we want to make sure that we go look for a specific column and we're filtering by school side hustle secrets equals no and if we take a look at our air table you can see here school side hustle secrets and it's basically looking for one one um one column that has no next to it so it can actually go get that transcript and so if we go back over here we want to return just one we don't want to return all 100 and we want to make sure that we want to sort this by when it was created so we can select created at and then we're going to check descending and if we test step we should get one so if we look at this it says uh, green screen Sabrina Carpenter new album let's see if we can scroll over Looks like it was able to find one, which is good. So we have that already taken care of. The next thing is simply to just create an AI agent. Now this AI agent is really gonna do the heavy lifting for us. It is going to take in the, the summary that we've created in the previous step, and it is going to create a school style post. Now it's important that it returns both a title and a body which is different than what we did yesterday, which was uh, just a single string of text. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to define below, and then we are going to actually give it a prompt. Now, this is a very specific prompt here that we are going to give it. 
Now, what I would encourage you to do is in this prompt to make sure that there are no issues. First, change this to expression. And then when you paste it in, you are going to click on this little uh, expander here. And what I found that I have to do is I want to make sure that I tell ChatGPT to just give me text. Do not use the asterisks for emphasis. Do not include the dashes because the dashes create problems. No numbered list and no bullet points. Just give me the text, ChatGPT is basically what I'm saying. And then I want to connect the model. I'm going to use OpenAI. You can use any one of these. We're going to leave it at 4 Mini. Then we are going to select the Think tool as well to help us think. And always include, down here, I'm going to let you see the prompt again. I always like to include, use, use the included think tool to make the post best, the best po possible response. Easy for me to say. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to require a very specific output. And that's because we want it to essentially return JSON with a title and then body. So we're just going to click on output parser just like this. And then we are going to do structured output. And from here, I am just going to, I'm going to copy and paste in the JSON output that we're looking for, just like that. So title and then text. So that's going to be, if we look at school and we click on write something, title here and then text. Okay. And that's all we need for that. We can make sure that you hit save after you're doing each step, but we're just going to test this. All right, great. So we've got the title, we've got the text, makes life a little bit easier. Now, this is the secret sauce, what we have to do to make sure that we don't get any errors. And this is going to require a little bit of coding, but don't worry, I've got you. You can just copy and paste this in. So we're going to click on the code node. We're going to leave it at JavaScript. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy this over. And basically what we're telling it to do is to get rid of certain types of characters. So we want to get rid of any character that has the uh, new line text, the double dashes, the double quotes, because for whatever reason, when school is trying to enter this information into, when, when the software that we're trying to use is trying to enter the information into school, it runs into all sorts of problems. And to avoid that, we're just going to get rid of it. As you can see there, it says replace um, the, the characters that I mentioned with spaces, and then it returns what's called sanitized title and text. So if we click test step here, it's going to quickly get rid of everything that we mentioned and it's going to give us this wall of text. So we get out of that. And then the next step is to use this third party via an HTTP request. And HTTP basically means is that if there isn't a node that's already set up inside of N8M, we can go grab the API from the website and it will allow us to use some of the backend functions even if there isn't a node created. And what we're going to use is we're going to use something called browser use. Okay. Browser use allows us to emulate like we have a, a browser. And while it's not free, it's relatively inexpensive for what we want to use it for. If we scroll down here, you can see you can pay a la carte or pay per use or pay per step, or you can pay $30 per month. And I just elected to pay $30 per month to test it out and see how it goes. But once you sign up, whether you buy the credits or you use the $30 per month, what you need to do inside of browser use is go down to where it says billing and API, and you want to click on create API key. You're going to click on this API key. You're going to give it a name, and then it's going to give you a unique key. You're going to need that key a little bit later. Also, what's really cool about, uh, about most, most of these platforms is that there is API documentation that will make it much easier when implementing. So we can go through, we're going to wind up running a task. <clears throat> and what we can actually do is we can copy this curl request over, but I'm actually going to give you everything that you need so that you uh, can get going quickly. Come back over here. <clears throat> we are simply going to make a few changes here. What we're going to do first is we're going to change this to a post request like that. We are going to enter in a URL. This is the URL that we can actually get over from browser use. Oops. Uh, post URL authentication, authentication for whatever reason, I can't say it today. Um, we're going to leave that as none. We are going to send over headers though. The headers that we are going to send over are going to be the authorization header. So we're just going to copy this. This is text sensitive. So you want to make sure that you have that capitalization and then we're going to send over our bear and then our API key. So you're going to enter in bear space API key. 
really important that you follow that or else it won't work. The final thing that we want to add is we want to add body parameters. And so if we scroll down a little bit, we're going to click on and send body. And then we are going to send body using the fields below. And what we're going to do here is we're going to type in task just like this task. And then for value, this is where, whoops, this is where we're actually going to send over the steps that the, that browser use needs to take in order to uh, make sure that, <clears throat> excuse me, that it completes the re request. So under value, I am just going to send this over. And again, you can copy and paste it, right? So what we want to do is we want to make sure we change this to expression. And then we are going to open this up just like that. And I'm going to paste in just like that. So what we have up here is we have email. So the email that you use to connect to the school and then the password. Right. And then if you scroll down here a little bit, we've got an input for the title, which is that title. And then we've got an input for the text. We basically can just drag this and drop it right over and that'll work out perfectly. Make sure you take a screenshot of this so that you can enter it in exactly as you see it. If not, you can always go over to the API section and browser use and actually configure it that way. But it's easier if you just take a screenshot and make the changes. Also down here, the URL that you want the um, of your community, you can go there, right? And so once we do that, we are going to test the step like this. And then oh, what did I do wrong? Um, check credentials. Oh, I actually don't have the credentials inputted here and that's why it's not working. But what we would do here is we would click on test step and then that's when it's going to trigger the process that I showed you on this other N8M. If we test the step here, it simply would activate the browser use, which I'll show you in just a moment. And then the final step is simply just updating the Airtable record to yes, so that it doesn't check it again, as you can see there. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, if you're stuck anywhere, uh, what I've done, and I kind of just omitted it, is you do have to connect your Airtable account with, with an API key, right? And so what you can do, if you've never done that before, you can hit this drop down and then click on create new credential, and it'll walk you through the steps of getting your API key um, under your account. And the same goes for ChatGPT. What you can do for OpenAI, uh, OpenAI API, open AI API, hit enter, and you can go here, click on login or create an account, click on API platform, and you can actually get your API credentials. It's a unique name and password, just like for browser use. It's, uh, it, it allows the two platforms that don't normally know each other, it allows them to shake hands. And so I'm just gonna show you this one more time, but essentially that's, that's basically it. What's really cool about this is that it's a really simple automation. And the cool thing about AI agents, AI automation, N8N, is once you have experience building out a couple of these, building out more and more becomes much easier, okay? And so I'm just gonna show you once again, I'm going to double click on this, and I'm gonna execute the previous steps to just kind of show you what this would look like once again. And what we can even do too is we can scroll over and verify that we've got a few under no so that we can actually run this. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna come down to where it says roadmap, and I'm gonna change this roadmap to no. And we're gonna test this step again. Okay, so here's your roadmap, good. And now I am going to go up to this point, and I'm going to test all the steps before it, and then we can use uh, ChatGPT to, to see, to get the results. So establishing your online presence in simple steps, great. Um, what we can do next is go over to school. We're going to double click on that. We're going to test this. It should give us a all clear. Then we can come back over to browser use and then we see that this is happening once again. This process should go through and take a couple minutes to log me in and then go ahead and create the post. All right, so if we take a look now, looks like it worked like a charm. So that is the process step by step. Again, this should save you time, potentially help you make more money, uh, build a deeper connection with your community all in one place. If this video helped you out, make sure you like, comment, follow, share, subscribe, do all the good stuff, and we'll see you in the next video.